here putting food plots in and so we decided to go with something different this year for these food plots we are running wildlife management solution the yacht yacht lucky seven blend and uh this is just a solid blend to get at your local co-op uh, but what drew us into this blend was mainly it's using high quality seed uh, and like most people don't know this or don't really get into this in the food plus but like you have different types of clover blends you have different types of seed but like you want high quality seed and so like I'll use this blends of clover there's hundreds of iterations of blends of clover out there but you want blends of clover that's fixation that is a genetically created specially derived line of seed that is like top notch you can go and watch youtube videos comparing and contrasting uh, the differences in the performance of different types of blends of clover and fixation always dominates uh, but with that so this blend actually runs some really high quality seeds so you got blends of clover fixation you got white cloud crimson clover uh, and, and whatnot. And so it's running turnips, oats, wheat, rape, all that. And it's got a good blend and it's local at your local co-op, at least here it is in Tennessee. And uh, we're gonna be putting this in the ground uh, this year. And we will be hitting it probably 100 pounds per acre. It says 85 pounds per acre is the recommended. We kind of go over that uh, to hit that. And we are planning to hit about 60 acres in food plots. Lots of seed going in the ground. We just got a decent rain. And uh, for us right now, like seed should be going in right about now. So like perfect timing, little head of the ball today and super exciting game time. This is the most fun. Like this is a non-cell camera. We get no cell reception down in this valley. Seeing what showed up. Not what you want to see on the first one, the coyote. That was it. A couple does. That was the only thing. Disappointing. Slightly. It's almost like that one deer boogered on out of here so yeah we didn't get much on this trail camera but this is like a slow grind and so we're going to try to juice this this is a mineral lick type item and we're going to load that right here and uh we got some some spicy sauce to really jack this up uh, with the goal just like trying to draw stuff in we got that one picture of that one buck 10 yards away and uh, it's a perfect setup right the trifecta. we got three roads coming together creek crossing food there food there food there uh, it's a right nice little uh, travel corridor big buck identified like but we got to get some sort of pattern we got to get them coming in and so we're gonna try got a mock scrape thing going with some powerful scents we like to I always I'm a data person. I, would, I like to isolate stuff and do my own thing. But the goal here is we have mock scrapes running around here. We have mock scrapes with mineral licks. And so now we're going to try to isolate this variable and see what works the best for us. Uh, so this one is just going to be a mineral lick. I know there's a travel corridor. I know deer move through here. Uh, what, what I want to be able to determine is like, are they coming to the mock scrapes, the scent of what draws that in, or are they coming into this? And when you have two of them, 
uh, that's the ideal solution, but like these things cost money. All this stuff costs money. And so for me, like I want to know like, is it the mock scrape that's holding it in or is it the mineral lick that's holding it in, or is it both? Uh, so if nothing hits this, I know deer walk this, this road hardcore. So if they're just walking straight by this, we'll know because we're going to set up a camera this way. Deer walk the road, they'll walk right by this. If they hit this hardcore, then we can say that this is a high, high attractant and is worthwhile investing in. Uh, we have just a mock scrape. If they're hitting the mock scrape, and so we're, we'll be able to isolate which variable is the most highest draw attractant uh, for what we're trying to get accomplished, which is identifying big bucks in large tracts of timber. Uh, there's acorn trees everywhere, so we're trying to find out some sort of advantage that we can use legally in the woods. You ready? This is Tennessee tree kale. It's only unique to this area. It's super healthy for you. Great. I love to toss this with some balsamic vinaigrette. Uh, the macros and the protein and all the health nutrients you get out of this Tennessee tree kale. The best of the best. Protein shakes, all of that. Highly encourage you to crush it. We are out here in these crazy valleys trying to find some sign, find some scrapes, whatever, but um, also you know, this time of year, we're looking for a bunch of deadheads. So we're just walking these riverbeds, these gorges. And just as we were leaving, looked over and caught a glimpse of this guy. He's been here for a while, though. <laughs> Antlers have been chewed on, moss in the skull. It's like, everything's just degrading. But this is what we're looking for. It's, there's so many valleys and so many little offshoots down here. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to find anything. But hey, we found something and uh, hopefully it encourages us to find some more, but we're gonna keep at it. Might go, uh, I don't know what we're gonna do next, maybe freshen some scrapes, but never, find, never fun to find them like this. This is, looks like a younger deer, but kind of cool brow time, but nonetheless though, it's always good to find, has some closure on some things, so good find, but we're gonna keep going. So yeah, we picked up, we did a mock scrape right here, about 40 yards down there. But we had a one monster walk by. Very large deer at nighttime. And the setup on it, it's like everything out here, we're on a ridge top, creeks on both sides, uh, very steep. It drops way off. And so, but it was walking down this way. And so, we had an encounter with a big buck two years ago right in this area. And so we will definitely, we're gonna do a, a, just put up a set. And what I mean by that is like, put it all up, get geared up, and like get to the height we wanna do and cut out a little area where we're gonna be tucked in so that we know what we're gonna do. Like, I hate, I despise it. I'm not a big flashlight believer. So like, I refuse to use flashlights in the dark. Uh, unless I'm hunting public land and I have no idea where I'm going. But if I have some idea, I use the moonlight and I know which tree and my steps are pretty much dialed in right where I want to go. And so I want to know which tree we're going to stick up, know exactly which side the sticks are, and then we can plan out exactly how we can film it, exit entry routes, all that. Like I want to iron that out now so you don't screw it up when the prime time comes, you got deer moving. These are the little things that you can be doing right now to help you get an advantage in uh, 30, 40, 60 days from now when the rut's kicking in. Let's find that tree though. So yeah, I'm cutting these trees off. And I mean, mainly it's just for convenience. I hate using linemans and tethers and coming up and the disconnecting, reconnecting, all that stuff that's entailed. So we're trying to cut. You want to keep the concealment where you need it, obviously. But like this great hui man, the guide on cuts over like, I can. Ugh. 
that's just something that's like a safety, easy, avoidable, cut some of the early branches so you're not wasting time, disconnecting. guys in my hair it really is man <laughs> it's no good uh, I don't think I would cut anything more like I don't have my platform but like and I don't have an aider but like I think about right here like we'll be standing platform should be about right here yeah at this height so we'll be all tucked into that canopy shooting downward yeah, and you have this branch right here in front of you that's like... We got a lot up here. Like, like once you get good, up like, here, like... when the fall comes, still blocking your... Blocking everything. Yeah, like... For me, like... I got a shot here. I got a shot here. If I had my platform, I'd probably be positioned out, like... You could be right here. Or on the tree behind you, too. Yeah. Directly, yeah. It's a lot or of right there. Yeah. Like you got great canopy all around you. I can't see the scrape at all. I don't think you really need to see the scrape. You got the trail rocking right through here. Yeah, one thing I love about this, like, for me at least, like, when doing this type of project, one, I have a little molly cord or a little paracord wrapped around my tool, but I hate, I don't hate them, that's a strong word. I just like when I'm doing this type of work with a chainsaw, these battery ones make it a lot easier. They're pocket, they're small. Uh, That's so loud, so hideous. So when I'm doing work like this, I always try to stick with these battery operated chainsaws. I don't know, I'm not an arborist. I have no desire to be up here uh, pulling on a chainsaw to get going. Uh, and they're lighter, they're smaller. They're not super powerful. And so it's nice just to come up here, whack some branches, get an idea of what's coming around you, what your shots look like, uh, have an expectation, know where the trails are, and uh, really have your system dialed, especially for us if we're filming for y'all and trying to get content and uh, have fun with this. Like, you gotta really know what you're doing. Like, we could be set up in this tree, this tree, this tree, but we're tucked in. We have decent shot. We can see what's coming on either side behind us. Like it's never fun when you're in such a tight area and all of a sudden like they're right below you. Uh, that's always tough to get a move on. But this is a this is a good setup. And that buck that walked right by here would have been smoked if we had night vision. Uh, yeah. Dude, if that buck walked by, I'd smoke that thing right here. Oh, I'd probably yeah. shake out of the tree. <sighs> Have to go to Never Ever Land if I fell out of the tree. So, yeah, guys, now is the time to get your system dialed, get your gear up, and get ready because the season is here for sure. Tennessee's like opening, opening, normal season three weeks from now. And so, yeah, it is game time. Do what you need to do to get your system ready. Start getting all your plans. Get your trail cameras. If you don't have them out now, get them out. Uh, 
get some sets going, figure out what you're doing, get some strategies down, get out in the woods. We walked around looking for trails, found a dead head. It's the only way you're gonna get on big deer is you gotta be, you gotta boots on the ground, Onyx topographic maps, studying that stuff, trail cameras, rubs, scrapes, mock scrapes. Literally we're running everything we can in our toolbox to find that deer because it just, very rarely do they just fall into your lap. So stick with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe, man. It's a big help to us. Uh, it tells us what you like and don't like. And if you like it, smash that like button. If you don't like it, smash that dislike button. Don't really, but yeah, <laughs> all good. And uh, stick along as we continue on this journey. Huh. <clears throat>